There's a question that haunts many men in silence, especially after a certain age. It's a question that sparks some hesitation to ask, even to a trusted doctor. The question is simple and direct. Doctor, my intimate life, the frequency with which I practice self-love or am with my partner, can it affect my health? Can it be good? Can it be bad? And the most critical question, does it have anything to do with prostate cancer? Today we're going to talk openly about this without taboos, as if you were right here in my office, because what you do in your privacy can, indeed, directly influence your quality of life. Hello, I'm Dr. Mariah, and today we're going to use science to uncover the truth about the relationship between ejaculation frequency and your prostate health. This small gland, the size of a walnut, plays a massive role in your life. Stay with me because the answer science gives us is truly surprising. To understand what's coming, we need to meet our star, the prostate. Think of it as the heart of a complex orchestra. Located just below the bladder, its main function is to produce prostatic fluid, a nutrient-rich base packed with zinc and enzymes essential for sperm vitality. But the prostate doesn't perform alone, Semen is a symphony. The seminal vesicles add the main volume, an energy-rich fluid with sugars. And the testicles deliver the soloists, the sperm. They're the smallest part of the volume, but the most crucial. This mix forms semen. Now the grand finale, ejaculation, a process that happens in two stages. First, emission, when all components gather in the urethra. Then expulsion, when a rhythmic contraction of the pelvic floor muscles releases the semen. This entire symphony depends on a flawless conductor, the communication between your nerves and muscles. That's why conditions like diabetes, or as we'll see, prostate surgeries, can throw this orchestra out of tune. Many patients ask me, what happens biologically when semen builds up? Does it pose a risk? Let's go straight to the science. There's no evidence that prolonged abstinence alone causes a serious illness. However, flow is important for the body. Imagine the prostate as a system that needs movement. When flow is low, there can be stagnation. This is especially relevant for men with chronic prostatitis. In these cases, low ejaculation frequency can worsen pelvic congestion. Science has observed that regular ejaculation frequency can actually be part of symptom relief. The act of ejaculating helps clear the prostatic ducts, relieving internal pressure. And there's a bonus for your brain, sleep. Orgasm releases a neurochemical cocktail for relaxation, including prolactin and oxytocin. A recent 2023 study in sleep disorders showed that this significantly improves the ability to fall asleep and sleep quality. In other words, your intimate life doesn't just benefit your prostate, but also your rest. Now, let's get to the million-dollar question, the one that causes the most concern. Does ejaculation frequency have anything to do with prostate cancer risk? In other words, can ejaculating more be a form of protection? Science has been investigating this for decades, and the results are surprising. And before I tell you what the studies say, I have a quick request. If you think this information can help other men, please leave your like and subscribe to the channel. It's a simple gesture for you, but helps me bring serious health content to many more people. Thank you so much for your support. Here we go. The most important study on this topic was conducted by Harvard University. Researchers followed nearly 32,000 men for almost two decades. The findings were remarkable. Men who ejaculated 21 times or more per month had a prostate cancer risk up to 33% lower compared to those with a frequency of four to seven times monthly. And here's the key detail. The study indicated that how ejaculation occurred didn't matter. The benefit was tied to the physiological act itself, 
not to sexual activity with a partner. Other studies, including a major 2018 review, reinforced this conclusion. Higher frequency appears to be associated with lower risk. As a healthcare professional, my honesty comes first. It's important to know that these studies found a correlation, not a direct cause. They rely on self-reports, which aren't always perfect. But when so many studies point in the same direction, we scientists need to investigate. Why does this happen? What's the secret behind this potential protection? There's no final answer yet, but the theories are very logical. Think of your prostate as a car engine that needs regular maintenance. The first theory is the oil change. Over time, impurities and harmful substances can build up in the prostatic fluid. Ejaculation is like changing the engine oil. It removes old fluid and its impurities, preventing wear and long-term cellular damage. The second theory is the engine balance. Regular activity helps keep the hormones acting on the prostate at stable, healthy levels, avoiding the overheating that could lead to abnormal cell growth. And the third is the car alarm. Like exercise, intimate activity can make our defense system, the immune system, more alert. A strong immune system is like a good alarm. It detects and neutralizes threats, like cells with the potential to become cancerous, much faster. And finally, the orgasm itself has a beneficial effect. The contractions improve prostate circulation, reduce inflammation, and lower oxidative stress, a trigger for aging and cellular damage. So, to sum up everything we've discussed, I want you to leave here with a very clear idea. Ejaculation frequency appears to have a protective effect, but it's not your main prevention strategy. There's no magic number. Your true strategy, the one proven to save lives, is medical follow-up. Your action plan is simple. Visit your urologist annually. Get the blood test PSA. Discuss the need for a digital rectal exam. This is taking control of your health. This is what allows early diagnosis and completely changes the game against prostate cancer. In summary, ejaculation frequency can be a beneficial tool, but it's just one part of a much larger health toolkit. What are the most important tools in that kit? The ones science has already validated. Quit smoking. Control your weight. Prioritize real food, more vegetables, fewer packaged products, and please move your body. Sedentary living is a silent poison for your prostate and overall health. Beware of those selling easy cures online. Health is serious and requires responsibility. To help you take the next step, I've prepared a video explaining everything about preventive tests, like the PSA. I recommend you watch it. Thank you so much for your time and trust. It was an honor to have you here. If you learned something new today, help me spread this message. Leave your like, share this video, and subscribe. Every interaction helps me create more quality content and fight misinformation. Take good care of yourself and take the reins of your health. Until next time.